Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Shasta 27RL. This is a classic floor plan, uh, still a, a great selling floor plan, a lot of people like it. It's not my personal favorite, but again, it's not about what I want, it's about what you want. So let's go through it. We'll start right here in the back and uh, with the these real living floor plans, what you oftentimes have is exactly what we have here, which are two chairs. These particular chairs are swivel rocking chairs. Uh, as far as size for the chair, I'll take a seat in here for you. So they're not the biggest chairs ever. They're not super wide. Um, you know, it, it's not bad for me. Again, it's not the you know ultimate luxury. It's not like I'm sitting in like a lazy boy or anything, but you know, it's good enough. I can sit here, I can rock, I can read. I have a big picture window behind me. So if you have a nice view, you can certainly enjoy that. Plus you get this little end table here so that way you have a spot for your beverages or your laptop, tablet, whatever else there. Right underneath, you will see you have some additional storage plus the little cubby hole there, which is great. Windows on both sides, you will see these windows open. So that way, if you want some cross ventilation in the back here, you don't want to turn on your AC, you can just open those up. Also some LED reading lights and storage all the way across the top. And then moving up a little bit, you get into the super slide. So uh, kind of a common trend we've been seeing in the late 2019, early 2020 model years is instead of having storage above the sofa, a lot of manufacturers have gone to larger windows. And that's exactly what they did here. Um, you know, the main reason is because it lets in more natural light. Let me know your thoughts. You know, I've kind of heard uh, both sides of the coin. Some people want storage, some people like the bigger windows. I'm a person who likes a lot of light, especially natural light, so I like the windows, but again, I know it's not for everyone. Right down underneath that, you have your jackknife style sofa. Now with this particular one, as you can see, this uh, center little cushion here drops down into an armrest with some cup holders. So that way you kind of get like pseudo theater seating. Not that you have a great view to the TV, because you know, you'd kind of be like this, but it, you know, if, if you have some people over for conversation, it does allow you to have good conversation. You kind of get an armrest in the center, which is a little more comfortable, in my opinion. Underneath, of course, with the jackknife is a ton of extra storage. So, uh, you know, this is great. If you have extra bedding, that's an excellent spot for it. Your pillows, your blankets, things like that. And then this one also has the U-shaped dinette. Now, it's not super necessary in this particular floor plan because, you know, a lot of people want U-shaped dinettes for family, and this is built for a couple. But as I take a look at this, or as I sit in this U-shaped dinette, you'll notice a couple things. Uh, one, you know, you can kind of have one person on each side. If we swing around to the back here, as an adult, you can really only fit one more person here, especially when you're talking plates. You'll have about three plates. So really, it's only a three-person dinette anyway. But the nice thing about it is that if you have adult guests that are staying the night, this does drop down into a bed where two adult guests can sleep. And I think that's why they put it in the floor plan. Otherwise, you don't have a lot of uh, great space or accommodation for guests. Uh, the thing I don't like about the table, personally, something I think they, they need to adjust is the height. Yeah, I think it's pretty tall. You know, I mean, again, you probably won't have too many grandkids here. And as an adult, it's not awful. But, you know, if I'm cutting with a knife, I mean, my elbow's way up here. Just, just a little high. I think they could have lowered it, you know, maybe an inch or so, and it would have been a lot better. They did uh, cut out the corners, though, to make it a little bit easier to slide around, which is nice. Underneath, you will see the storage. Open that up for you. Swings open just like so. That way you can access what's underneath there. That, of course, is easier than having to lift up a cushion. You can still do that, but in order to access it that way, you'll have to remove these two cushions plus the bottom one. So generally, having the door swing open is easier. For the entertainment center, you have this accent wall, kind of a faux brick look there. They put a sticker to show you where the uh, backer in the wall is located so you know where to mount that TV. The thing I like about this that you miss on a lot of floor plans, this is, this is a decent size here for a TV. I don't know, able to fit like a 42 inch or something. I, I'm ballparking, I'd have to measure it, so don't quote me on that. Um, but you know, probably somewhere in that vicinity. So hopefully it's big enough. That's kind of the, one of the big downfalls, in my opinion, with this particular floor plan and all manufacturers, not Shasta, but a lot of manufacturers make this floor plan. And it's just a long distance from the chairs in the back, you know, probably your most comfortable seating area, all the way up to here. So you, you probably want a decent sized TV. Uh, connections for that, of course, right up on the ceiling, with the exception of these audio video cables here, which are plugged into this multimedia center. You will see this one has a USB input as well as an HDMI input, <coughs> excuse me, and is Bluetooth capable. Tiny bit of storage here underneath. And then you have a fireplace as well. Now, while the fireplace isn't super necessary, the thing I do like about it is it's aesthetically pleasing, right? It's nice to look at. Uh, and also it does put out some heat. So this is a big space. It's probably not gonna heat it up on its own, 
but it does do a, a decent job to supplement your propane. Uh, we'll kind of start here and I'll work our way through the kitchen, then we'll, we'll cut back and make our way up front. Uh, but you'll see here if I open this up, you have some storage here. I, I'm kind of torn here as well, right? Um, I, I understand that you try to put storage anywhere you can. I'm just not sure what I would put here. They're, they're pretty big spaces, you know, I don't have shelves where it becomes like a pantry. Um, I, I mean, I guess, you know, having a couple big spaces are nice, you have like big boxes of cereal, things like that. But I guess in, in my personal opinion, I would have preferred like um, some coat hooks or some shelves to make like, I don't know, like a, a, let's say a linen closet, but you have that over there. But I don't know, I guess just a pantry. I'm not sure, right? I mean, if you can use the space, great. It's always good to have extra space in a camper. Obviously you have, you know, the pantry here. Um, so maybe that's why they didn't put the shelves in. But uh, either way, there is some pretty good storage, especially for this type of floor plan in this particular layout. You will also see the Everchill refrigerator. This is a condenser driven fridge, which is great. Open that up. So this one runs uh, just off of electric. Cool thing about that is it actually runs off 12 volts, right? Which a lot of the residential refrigerators and RVs do not. So uh, with, you know, a couple batteries and enough solar, you can actually run this uh, basically just off the solar, I'm told, which is pretty spectacular because it's a, a low uh, energy consumption fridge. What they did do, and this is new, you know, when they installed this Everchill is this right here, they have a power switch to turn it on and off, which in a second here, hopefully we'll see that light pop on. Maybe, no, okay. Um, but they do have a power switch here to turn the fridge on and off. I am a little torn on the switch, right? I guess, you know, you guys let me know in the comments section why you would have this. I've just never been in a circumstance where I didn't want my fridge on while camping. So um, I'm sure the manufacturer put it there for a reason. I'll probably have to reach out to the manufacturer to see why. I've just never known of a need for it. So, so let me know. Uh, also, if we move further into the kitchen, you will see that they did use a thermal foil countertop, which is nice. They have a recessed cooktop. They have the undermount sink, so that way you can use all of this as prep space. This is a graystone uh, cooktop unit. When we fold that back, it gives you access to the three burners, the front one there being high output. The knobs do light up, and it has an oven underneath if you want to do some baking, which is pretty cool. A lot of manufacturers are also going away from ovens, so you know I am glad that in this price point, they still kept the oven. You have the faucet here, kind of swinging that aside. You will see the, uh, the sink cover. This one, of course, is cutting board quality. I always recommend just cutting on one side so you have a side that looks nice still. Big single bowl sink there. Um, I, I've, you know, again, this is kind of two schools of thought on this. I personally like the single bowls because they're large enough. You can put residential cookware in there. But I know not everyone uses residential cookware and obviously if you have split bowls, it is a little bit easier to wash and rinse dishes. When I go, if I have a single bowl, I just bring like a little plastic tub with me and drop it in there. It's easy enough, it works. And then right underneath the sink, you also have enough space for a trash can, which is great. And you will also see there's a big shelf in there too. So, you know, it kind of gives you some pots and pans storage. It's a little bit far back there, a little bit hard to reach, but at least it is there. And you still have space for a trash can, which is good. Coming around to the side, two full extension ball bearing drawers. You'll see those are Nice and large, plenty big for all of your uh, flatware as well as anything else you need to bring with you. If it's, you know, hot pads, your dish towels, things like that. Some additional storage right up top there. Of course, the microwave and the hood are above your cooktop. And as we make our way into the bathroom, you will see right outside of it, you have a big linen closet. So you have plenty of space for your towels, your hand towels, any other bathroom goodies you need to toss in there. And then when we take a look at the bathroom itself. So I am six foot, as you'll see, I have plenty of leg room, which is wonderful. I also have good space in the shoulders here, touching maybe a tiny bit on the left, but still good space. And on the right, I have more than enough thanks to this cutout. You'll also see that you have some countertop space here, which I love. Underneath, you have enough room for you know some uh, extra toilet paper or maybe some reading material. A little bit of space underneath that. And underneath the sink, both plumbing access, they put a shelf in there so that way you can use that bottom space too. So if you don't want your toilet paper and your black tank chemicals hanging out, you can always toss it right in there. Mirrored medicine cabinet up top. It's an actual uh, you know wood medicine cabinet, not a plastic one, so I enjoy that. And if we take a look at the shower, you'll see you have a faux brick uh, surround in here, the hand wand, couple of shelves. Uh, up top is your vent fan. So this is not a, a skylight. Um, I'm Again, I'm six foot tall, as you can see, my head does touch here. Uh, if I'm not under that under that vent fan with it, you get maybe an inch. 
So you, you know, if you're six one, you'll probably be hitting the top here. If you're six foot, kind of stand right here in the center of your find. Any shorter than that, you won't have any issues in the shower. If you're taller, of course, you'll have to bend down. And then uh, as we make our way back up front, oh, it's probably important to point out there is a second door here. Don't want to forget that, the second entrance. Um, with the slide closed in, you can still make your way all the way through the camper, but this does make it a little bit easier to access kind of this front section. And if we make our way into the bedroom, you of course, you know, as, as is uh, kind of the norm with a camper, you kind of, you know, have to do the sideways shuffle. You, you know, you can try to fit through this way, but as you can see, it's not super easy. So you kind of have to shuffle your way through to this side of the bed. You have nightstands on both sides, electrical outlets on both sides. You have a CPAP machine, something like that, you'll be good. You have USB port on the one side there. Up above that, mirrored medicine cabinets, I'm sorry, <laughs> mirrored wardrobes. Uh, the hanging rods, you have a spot to hang your clothes. The shelf connecting them in between. And if we take a look underneath, you will see that you have storage here. Now this is shared access. Uh, when we go outside and take a look at the pass through, you'll see that's all one big storage area. If you want a TV in the bedroom, the connection's forward or right up top. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Shasta 27RL. Up front, this unit does come with a power tongue jack, making it easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. You also see a light right up front for added visibility at night. Behind that, you have two 20-pound propane tanks with the cover, rails there for your battery, and the diamond plating coming up the front, helping protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Coming around to the side, we'll open up the pass-through. It has a covered hinge, so you don't have a bunch of rust coming down the door. And as I mentioned, when we were in the bedroom, you'll see this is all one large shared space that we have a couple different access points. There's also two lights in there right next to both baggage doors, so that way, if you're getting in there at night, it is quite easy. Uh, underneath, this unit does have a um, uh, closed and insulated underbelly. So that way, uh, you know, it'll help keep things a little bit toastier in some of the colder climates. Also keep a lot of the road grime and stuff off there, which is nice. Your power awning does cover both entrances. That's kind of great, right? So that way, if it's, you know, just sprinkling a little bit, you have your awning out, you're not going to get soaked. Um, also, it, again, it's a power awning, very easy to use. There's an LED light strip on there, so you can use it no matter what position that awning is in. This right here is that secondary entrance just straight across from the bathroom. The thing I do like about this is exactly that. If you have guests that need to use the bathroom, they can walk right in, use the bathroom, and walk right back out. Now, because this is the secondary entrance, you have a little bit smaller grab handle here. Also, you have your standard, ugh, brand new, a little bit tough. There we go. Um, you have your standard three fold-out steps, just like so. Uh, you know, that way, again, you're probably not gonna use it as often. They help save a little bit of money there, which of course they try to pass on to the consumer. So they, uh, you know, go with a little bit less expensive step and the smaller grab handle. You will see your electrical outlets here on the sides. If you need to plug anything in, that's the place to do it. Your fresh tank fill will also be located here on the campsite. A couple outside speakers. Those are connected to that multimedia center, but as I mentioned, it is Bluetooth capable. And then for our main entrance here in the back, they upgrade you to the Lippert Solid Step. And just like the name implies, it is quite solid. You know, the standard steps over time kind of start to get that springboard effect over from heavy use. These solid steps will not get that. You have adjustable feet, you have aluminum treads, which aren't gonna rust. Also a little bit of grip tape there. So if it's a little wet or damp, hopefully you won't slip and hurt yourself. You also have the larger grab handle. So you have that extra control when entering or exiting the RV. Coming around to the back, a couple things back here. One square tubular bumper with the end caps gives you a spot to store your sewer hose. I recommend storing it on the off camp side. The main reason, besides the fact your terminations are over there, uh, is also because you have a propane quick connect here. So this is probably where I'd hook up a grill. If you wanna do some camping, plug it in right there. It'll feed off your two 20 pound bottles up front. 30 amp detachable power cord plugs in there. You have your spare tire mounted to the bumper, so it's very easy to access. A big rear picture window we saw when we were inside. And if you look right up top, you will see backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, I mean, the prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. On our off door side, of course, we have the slide, but in front of that slide, you have both your cable and satellite inlets. And then you also have uh, your city water fill and solar prep. So if you want solar, simply buy portable panels, plug it into that prep, and it'll trickle charge your battery. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. 
Again, this is a 2020 Shasta 27RL. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also, let me know in the comments section what you think they nailed with this unit, what you think they missed, what you think maybe they should change, or if you were designing it, what you would do. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.